good day everybody welcome back to a this might be just a bonus episode of day tripping i don't know it's uh we thought the last episode we were probably done um but as you can see we got sunshine and it's a pretty beautiful day it's chilly uh but low winds and uh sunshine so we've got a little lake picked out that has been really good to us uh in previous falls um so we're coming in hoping uh for some good things um let's see what happens we're uh, only about a 30 minute drive here so we'll get to the lake we'll get out on the water and we will see what happens Okay folks, welcome back. Here we are, beautiful fall day. It was uh, four degrees in the truck, but the sunshine is packing some heat to it, so that's nice. Uh, we're on a little lake not too far from home. Um, haven't fished it all year. It's uh, one that we tend to visit late fall. So here we are, we're gonna uh, do some rounds, look for some moving fish, see what we can find, go to a couple of our kind of known spots, and uh, we'll see what we can find. Let's have a day. Go. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we're out here. I didn't even have the bloody phone out of the bag yet. Oh, decent rookie dude. Rob oh. is into a, oh, a no, fish. It's a rainbow. It's a I think it's a rainbow. No, that's a... Uh, that's a tank brookie, dude. Nice brookie. Nice. Okay. Oh! <laughs> so, we went about 100 yards from the bolt <laughs> launch and anchored up against a weed line. I cast out. Rob took forever to get set up. And finally, bombs went in there. And mine's been floating for five minutes. Hasn't touched something. He goes, bing, fish on. <laughs> it's not about the time. About Take the strategy. time to set up proper. Put the cast in the right place. <laughs> Fluke off. <laughs> Fluke off. There it is. I was waiting for that. <laughs> well, let's be honest here, right? Uh. Again, we haven't been here this year, so expectations aren't much. Other than temp's right, it's uh, the right time of year. Do the folks want to guess what fly? <laughs> I'll give you guys one guess as to what Rob is using. Um... Might start with an M. Might end with an M, too. Out of there? Yeah. Look at that, an M&M. &M. Weird. <laughs> okay. okay. Do you want to pump him? Oh, of course. Yes, please. Oh, it is fall. It's likely Scudzilla's, but we'll take a look. He's got such a cool lower jaw. I'll show you in a second. Here. Okay. These, these fish, when they get big, they kind of get, like, double chins on them. Yep. Yeah, a couple of those from the tanks and tenderloins had them double chins. So what do we got there? Remnants of some glass worms or something? Oh. Let's see it here. There's a old gamorous and a somewhat recent gamorous and it's Scud City. Maybe we'll get some pictures of him too, but look at that thing. Sun. Wait, there it is. Look at that. That's a nice brookie. You want Beauty. some pictures or let yeah, him go? Yeah, we'll take some pictures and then we'll let him go. Okay. <laughs> Saucy. Hey, can you dip those tails? <laughs>
So we moved again and again and again. And again. And again. And I was just strapping on a new fly. And what does Brandon do? Makes me stop. <laughs> so I can film. Well, we're probably <laughs> two hours into the day. And I think this is only our second clip. So that tells you about how the day's been. It's been slow. We've been looking. But it is the fall. And here I get it. And um, you never know when they might turn on. So another brookie. Another brookie. Another decent brookie. Yeah. Glass worms. Glass worms. See? Come a little closer to me here. See them? Glass worms. Jesus. Oh, wow. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Riveting. <laughs> Riveting. Okay, I'm see gonna, why it's been tough. I'm going to dig out my glass worm pattern. Okay. You want to have a look at this guy? He's a nice little fish, dude. <sighs> yeah, gorgeous. Okay. See you later, bud. Okay, Brandon, do that again. I will do my best. Hey, folks, had a couple questions about my rod holder. Um, I guess from another video when I was explaining how I sometimes use the rod holder to, um, to sort of work with the wind and sort of work on its own to hook fish. And people were noticing that I was adjusting it kind of smoothly all the way through despite the fact that there's these teeth on the Scotty. Um, Scotty does make a product now that fits in between there but for years, this is probably about 20 years old, I don't know if you can see it, I've just put a big washer, a big fender washer in between there so you can't ever tighten this up right teeth to teeth or tooth to tooth. Um, you just tighten it as much as you can but there's always some friction there and that'll allow you to just micro adjust how your rod sits right so you can have the tip of the rod right on the water which is important for hooking up fish by the way if you don't have that tip right on the water if you have it like this um, you may think that that's not a big deal but if they're just touching that fly and you've got a bow like that good luck even noticing it never mind hooking it up but if you get it down right on the water everything tight there's a good chance that when it touches that fly it's going to hook itself or at least you'll see it and you can grab it and try to hook it so just a tip, um, just an idea. Like I said, you can buy these discs from Scotty now, but if not, the good old fender washer will do. It's so light, man. Like, I didn't even, I just sort of saw the bobber tilt over. That's about it. Mm. Chunky little fella. Yeah, they're in great shape in this lake. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so we got a pump full of, looks like, Hialeela scuds this time. Look, we got the whole gamut coming off today. <laughs> A oh, nice chunker. Yeah. Rainbow Fraser Valley under the water. Yeah, sure. When he pointed at you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at this sample. So um, the last sample was pure glassworms. So I actually put a glassworm on and I got two fish. Uh, didn't get the last one in the net. Uh, it's in the shade there. Yeah, there they are. Little high alellas. So we got the tiny scuds, we got the glass worms, we got all the good food items today. <laughs> Everything a fly for Sherman has. <laughs> so I'd love to show you this glass worm pattern, but I have to get permission. And uh, when I do, I'll show you up, but I'm going to keep using it for now. But with those little high alella, I think a big leech might start working again as well. So we're just going to try and see that. Here's Rob. <laughs> so, this is three for three now with the experimental pattern. Um, hey, dude, that's a, that's a chunk. That's a chunk. So, so, um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you think you can't get fish fishing glassworms, you're wrong. You can. <laughs> you can. And we're proving that right now. It's, uh, this is not the first time this pattern has done this. 
done it on multiple occasions over the last few years. And it's doing it again today and not even on the, just the little fish, the big bastards are taking it. <laughs> Why would the big bastards not take it? I don't know. Come on. It's enticing, obviously. <laughs> it's not a little fish. That's a shoulder. Shoulder sore. <laughs> I'm going to have to pop another ibuprofen. <laughs> Scrappy dappy do. Stupid glass worm. It's <laughs> a nice fish, that one. Fish of the day, I think. Actually, the first brookie is pretty close. Oh, let's give a pump. Looks like more high alala. Yep. Nice, dude. Very nice. See ya. <laughs> Let's take a look at these again. Okay, more stupid scuds. Yeah, so like I was saying, right? Like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not fishing a Hyalella. I'm fishing a glass worm. That's three for three, so I'm going to keep fishing it. The first three fish we caught were brookies. First on a leech, it had some gamorous scuds in it. Okay. Tried the gamorous for a while, no luck. Uh, Brandon puts a blob on. Second and third brook trout get caught with a blob. Don't sample the second one. Sample the third one and it's stuffed with glass worms. So, okay, we've been playing with this pattern. So, you know, play with it when we can, try to prove it. It's proven out pretty good. Um, so I decide to put it on. Put it on, catch a Fraser almost instantly. It pops off, unfortunately, right before I can get it in the net. Okay, no problem. A couple casts later, bam, another Fraser Valley. Land it, it's stuffed with high level scuds. Okay, so now I gotta decide, do I, what do I do, right? I've, I've hit two Frasers since I put the glass worm pattern on. Decide to keep it on, throw it back out there. Bam, third fish, third Fraser Valley, stuffed with high level scuds. So in that situation, what do you do, right? And what do I think is going on? Um, I'm not sure if in any of the, the videos previous we've talked about it, but often my personal um, choice for Hyalellas, I either, I'm either fishing... Oh, you bugger. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's four for four. <laughs> I just cast backhand here so I don't get in anybody's face, but... Anyhow, <laughs> back at it. So when the fish are on small hyalella, that's a that's a hell of a small pattern to try to tie. So what I do is I either fish a big leech, and we've had lots of success fishing big leeches when the fish are on hyalella, or I use one of my small cronies, either a little brown one that I use or a um, little olive one. Just a reminder that, you know, as fishermen, we we try to tie these flies that identically, if that's a word, represent what we're fishing, and that's good. But if it gets to the point where the, the organism is so small that you're going to end up messing that up, you're much better to go with just those, you know, the right size, the right profile in the area that the fish are eating. And um, see what happens. That's what, that's what we've been doing. It seems to work for us, so just thought I'd share it with you. Right in the sun, so I'm not sure what we're gonna see and what we're not. <laughs> gonna bring them around? I'm trying, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so what did you end up doing there, Brandon? Uh, well, I took your fly box <laughs> and put a glass worm pattern on. <laughs> so I tied four of those. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice fish. Fish come out at three feet of water. So I tied four of those at the beginning of the season, saying to Brandon, need, I need at least four of these in the box just in case we have to experiment. 
Well, <laughs> we're experimenting. <laughs> and I haven't had it on for more than, I had one cast out front of us, that was my first flip behind, and bam, like, unbelievable. You're in the rhubarb there, all wrapped up. Yep. Okay. Get him. Um, get him. Yep. <laughs> Next fish. Well, okay, get... so this guy was a little wrapped up there. He wasn't the most cooperative thing, but he's a pretty healthy fish. Oh yeah, good sized fish, dude. Two guys leaning over in the journey boat. Nice. Wow. Beauty. You want to pump them? Ah, oh, we know there's high yeah, in them, and that's what. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. so what I am with this. Yep, I tried. Okay, off he goes. And believe it or not, as tough as today's been, we might have him figured out. <laughs> well, we have. Okay. Back at the boat launch, trucks all loaded up. That is a wrap for today. Um, what was the common thread today? Persistence. <laughs> Persistence. <laughs> how about um, expectations? Expectations. So. <laughs> and how sometimes <laughs> we? I think we've mentioned in a few videos that we we've gone into them without any expectations, and I would like to say that was the case today, but it wasn't. We were coming here. Um, kind of with some good expectations of some reasonable fish and and maybe a good number of them in shallow water um but things aren't always as they seem i mean we got out here today rob literally smashed a fish on his first cast and it didn't even i don't even think that's fly sank the six feet he had it set at before he whacked that thing and then it was work 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 um but we got some quality fish which was nice um they're rewarding when, when they make you work for them and you can figure them out. Um, the, I think the biggest takeaway from today is probably this uh, uh, glassworm pattern that we were able to uh, soak for a little while and, and get into a bunch of fish with. Um, it's kind of a weird pattern. Glassworms aren't the easiest thing on the planet to uh, imitate. And we've been working on this for a couple years, but we all know how often you, you run into glassworms. It's not often, so... We like to take a lot of time proving out flies before we release them. I think after the last couple of years, um, this one's kind of to that point. So stay tuned. We'll probably release that in the near future here. So keep an eye out for that. Um, it's kind of an extra little bonus video. We, we thought maybe we would be done, but the, I mean, as you can see, it's a pretty beauty day. The uh, big pants are out because it's cold now, but um, yeah. So all in all, not a bad day. We learned some stuff, and if you can, sometimes going and, and spending a day not getting a lot of fish forces you to experiment, and you learn stuff, and you take that away, and it can help down the road. Um, it'll make you better. So that's what we're taking away from today. A couple decent fish, um, some lessons, and uh, I'm out here, so it was still an awesome day. But um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, do all those things that you guys do. And uh, until the next one, cheers and tight lines.